All right, what's up, everybody? So first off, I want to apologize for not posting recently. I had to take some time off from creating content to take care of some very important stuff while we were going through this pandemic. But I'm back, created some awesome projects for my music stuff, and were there lessons learned? Yup, let's go. All right, guys, before we get into it, you know the deal. If you like what I'm doing, I'm trying to build this channel, please hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it so that way you get notified as I continue to share my content with you. We talk about music, we talk about the creative process and lessons learned and things I've figured out. Plus, I'll review equipment and new things along the way. So let's get right into this, okay? Let's look at the facts. Being an independent artist takes a strict budget in order to meet the goals that you need to for your success. Now, what is that budget? Well, one, you got to pay in order to get your music finished, okay? Whatever that is, whether it's studio time, you're paying for a certain mixing or mastering service or whatever it is, right? But then you also have to budget for marketing. Now, the digital streaming services have completely changed the marketing game for musicians, I would say in the past 10 to 20 years or so. All right, so now what we have to focus on is being able to get your music heard. You can't just expect to release your music on Spotify, Apple Music, and that a lot of listeners are going to be able to hear it. That's not the case. You have to create a marketing budget in order to get your music in the hands of listeners. And so it's important to have that money aside. Now, I think there are some very expensive parts of releasing and taking care of your own music. One being the marketing side, which I talked about, and the other being mastering services. Now, if you're like me and you're on your own type of music budget to create and get your projects out there, okay, it may be difficult to pay $100 to $200 for a project. could be an EP or it could even be per track depending on the type of mastering engineer you're going to work with. So for me, I know that I can't afford to do that and also have the funds available to push a strong marketing campaign. Now, I want to post a caveat here for a minute. I am not downplaying mastering engineers. I respect what they do. They definitely have a very important craft in the music game. And you know what? One day I hope I can master as good as they do. And when I have a bigger budget, I absolutely will pay a mastering engineer to master my tracks. But until then, like I have to figure out a way to do it on my own. You could master your own tracks. But for me, I have found that Sure, I can do what I can to get a demo and to create a well-balanced master for people to review my music before I set it up for a final release. But I don't know if I trust my skills enough at, to master tracks to my own music to where I'm going to master and then set that out so it can be distributed. There's another alternative, automated mastering services, okay? There's quite a bit out there. And I've used several for a recent project. And it was kind of challenging because I was doing a lot of searching and nobody was really coming forward with reviews of what they got from using the services. So I want to share that with you. I'm not going to be playing the audio clips for two reasons. One, unless you're listening off of headphones or you're playing the music in your studio off of monitors, you probably won't hear the difference or won't be that much of a di difference anyway if you're listening right directly off your phone or your laptop. Okay, and the second reason is I distribute my music separately from a different account, and so I know YouTube's going to flag it. So I'm trying to avoid that. But what I will do is show you the frequency spectrum from the analyzer, so that way you can kind of see the change from the original file to the use in the different mastering services. It may gauge a good difference, it may not, but I wanted to present something to you because you know what, when I was figuring this out for myself, I spent a lot of time, it was probably several hours, bouncing my mixes, going to these different services and then re-putting them into a new session to compare them, to see how I was doing mastering in Ozone compared to what their services were doing, all right? So let me run through this, okay? So there was three services that I worked through. One was Master, okay, the second was Major Decibel, and the third was Lander. Now, I attempted to use the service eMaster, 
right? But it did not play out well. It took forever for me to get my sample back. I was really considering it because looking at the person who was behind the company is a Grammy Award winning engineer. So I was like, okay, this could be pretty cool. This guy's creating a, a service for people based on his experience. But based on not being able to get my sample fast enough. And when I finally got my sample back, it sounded like the volume was just increased, okay? The other thing that's worth looking into anytime you're investing and using services for your music, do your research. And unfortunately, I did not find positive research on the company practices. So we're not gonna talk about them, we're gonna talk about the other three. And at the end of the video, I'll tell you which one I ended up using for my EP. So the first service, Master. That's M-A-Z-T-R. I would say that this one brought back the most general flat response. It boosted the volume, it evened things out, okay, but it didn't overly distort it. Now, what's cool about this service is they let you kind of choose specific settings and you can adjust it to tailor to kind of how you want your music to sound, which I thought was cool and they have great free plans. It was just kind of flat. It didn't really increase or build the bass and I do a lot of EDM and I like a real full sounding bass during the mastering level. Okay, the next one was Major Decibel. It's a good service. They offer a lot of free opportunity, free tracks to kind of test out their service. To my taste, it sounded like the high end was extremely boosted. I mean, almost to the point where it like hurt my ears playing it back. I played it on my mid-range speakers and I played it on my big studio monitors. I did not enjoy listening to the song at that level. It was, um, it was a little too sharp, a little too bright, but maybe it could be my taste, I don't know, but for me, and I could definitely notice it when comparing it to the other music. And the final one I used was Lander. Now Lander, I really liked, I know that they've been doing automated mastering for a while, okay, but I liked their service, so I tried them out, compared their tracks, and I liked it. I felt like their master product of mine, which I just used the, I didn't go full on high, so you can choose different levels. I think it's low, medium, and high. I just did medium balance, it sounded good. The bass was well boosted. Everything felt kind of equal. I liked it. I thought it fit right for what I was trying to go for with my project. There you go. There's the, there's the big secret. I ended up going with Lander, but it didn't just come from, you know, saying, hey, oh, I got emails about this service. I wanted to actually dig in and see what am I actually releasing to people. And so that's my recommendation to you. If you're going to choose an automated service, you know, do your research, compare it to your track that you've created, boost the volume, compare them both. See what's going to sound best. And you know, at the end of the day, when it comes to levels or EQ balances or whatever, make the right decision so that the music's going to sound best. If it sounds good, it probably is good. If it sounds bad, choose something else. Anyway, guys, that's my pick. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, please, I'm trying to grow this channel. I've got some exciting things coming up and lessons learned with finishing my project. So hit the subscribe button, hit the like button if you want, and that little bell so that way you don't miss any of these upcoming episodes. I hope you guys stay safe, stay healthy, and keep creating. We can get through this together, guys. All right, I'm out.